This is Oz. He's been my co-pilot the last five years. This is Ellen. And this is Gundy. She came with Ellen. Sweet twofer. As Ellen and I have started our life together, one thing we've shared the process of is turning this house into a home. Some call it nesting, others call it adulting. This project presented an interesting dilemma. While I always want to do my best, finest, most precise work, I had to remember that those who were getting the most enjoyment out of this were, after all, dogs. So I ended up using pine 2x4s, which I had previously milled down to 1x3. There were a lot of parts to this build. It was important to make sure that they were all square. After I'd rough cut them, I used my trusty crosscut sled to make sure every piece was precise. Truth be told, this was my first project that's mainly held together with pocket holes. I've used the Mini and the Junior before with pretty good results. Upgrading to the K5 was a splurge, but well worth it I think especially since I had a lot of holes to drill. Someday, I might hook it up to the dust collector, but it just doesn't seem worth it right now with all the headache-inducing noise for such few big, heavy chips that are pretty easy to sweep up when I'm done. I actually think the drill press is one of the most underrated tools out there. I love tools that do one thing and do it well. In this case, the task is drilling 30 clean, perfectly centered, uniform depth holes for the dowels that make up the vertical bars of the kennel. I don't even want to think about what having to do this with a hand drill would be like. The nice thing is that drill presses are actually pretty affordable. If you have space in your shop and have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. They are so choice. Once the side structures were assembled, I needed to add the inner panels, first by routing the recesses, then squaring out the corners with a chisel. Cutting down some hardboard, and then gluing and screwing the panel into place. Pocket holes are really quick and easy to assemble, but like many things in woodworking, the more clamps, the better. And even with 
with all those clamps I mentioned, there were still a few gaps. And well, this is going to get painted eventually. The bottom was also pretty straightforward. These aren't pet elephants or anything, so some one-by-ones and a sheet of half-inch plywood is going to do the job. For making pine tabletops, I found that 2x8s are really the sweet spot in terms of quality and cost. I don't have a miter saw at the moment, so breaking them down to smaller, more manageable pieces used to be pretty tricky. But last summer, I took the plunge and built Nick Ferry's crosscut sled. At the time, I was pretty hesitant about the T-Track, so it was pretty expensive. But now, i found the clamps really useful for breaking down big pieces. The rest of this is kind of my standard tabletop making technique. I'm not a huge fan of painting, but Ellen really finds joy in it. biggest mistake in this whole project during the design stage, but didn't actually realize it until the thing was almost completely finished. The width of the top fits perfectly in the space between the fireplace and the wall, but once it's attached to the kennel, the kennel won't actually fit through any of the doors in my house. So on-site assembly it is, and God help the poor soul who tries to move it out of the house. 